morning is Apostle Dr. George Mike Potofi. With a clap offering unto the Lord, shall we receive Apostle Potofi coming all the way from the United States? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, people of God. May the peace of the God who instituted marriage and who makes marriage strong be with us all. I want to express my utmost gratitude to God who has predetermined that today become this glorious day when we will celebrate this amazing union. Dear fathers, uh, words cannot express how humbled I am to be given the rare privilege of sharing God's holy word in such a, an historic occasion. This is definitely not an easy task, but I have had lots of encouragements already. And with God's help, I believe we will share a few comments in the next few minutes, which will bless us in a long time. Shall we say amen? I want to begin by noting that it is not a coincidence that the God of the nations, who knows tomorrow from today, that God will schedule a holy union between two individuals representing two nations at such a time when the church is on a quest to possess the nations. I believe this is significant, and it is only the almighty sovereign God who can make such an occasion happen. Let's put our hands together for this great God. <laughs> Beloved, knowing a little bit about Stephanie and uh, my dear brother Sam, I have a little story to mention that came up as a result of our counseling uh, alongside with our dear brother, my colleague pastor, Pastor Ankoma. In fact, one of the counseling sessions, I did request for them to submit um, seven character traits that which feels, makes them feel attracted to each other. So each person was not to discuss what is written with the other. So they both came to the session, and I asked Stephanie to go ahead and let me know those seven traits, those virtues that uh, she sees in uh, Sam that makes her want to be with her, him the rest of her life. She went ahead and narrated seven powerful virtues. I will not talk about all of them here. But then when I turned to Sam, the interesting point here is that um, Sam said, Pastor, I have nine. <laughs> so instead of seven, Sam had nine. And when I looked at the atmosphere, it was filled with godly love. And when we began to discuss the items that they had, I described the session. In fact, the counseling session, the topic had to change to love is spoken here. You will see the love of God at work in the house. Beloved, based on that, I want to pick on a piece of that that tells us how does love look like, the faces of love. When we see love, love must look like something. We all know that as humans gathered here today, we are all creatures of love. We were born to receive love and to give love. And therefore, God knowing the power of love, the, the fact that love is what we need to thrive on the earth, he instituted marriage, the holy institution of marriage, so that that marriage environment, that marriage crucible, will be the place where humans can express love and can consummate love. In fact, this is where we are able to breed and groom and nurture destinies. And this is the reason why the enemy's major target in these end times is the holy institution of marriage. Faces of love. I want to read a passage from the book of Esther chapter 5, verse 2 and verse 3, in the English Standard Version of Scripture. You please turn with me if you have your Bibles with you. And when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, she won favor in his sight. And he held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. And the king said to her, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you, even to the half of my kingdom. I want to mention two principal um, elements or faces of love, facets of love, how love looks like from the story of Esther. The first of it that I want to identify quickly is appreciation. Appreciation. In other words, honor. 
In other words, Anna. In the Esther narrative, in fact, prior to Esther coming up, there was a king, a queen, Vashti. Vashti was a beautiful queen. In fact, the name of the word Vashti actually means beautiful. Vashti had an opportunity to honor the king. And the king invited Vashti to a national feast where she was supposed to so, show up and then demonstrate her beauty and for her to also be honored. But Vashti refused to honor the king. And that singular act of dishonor was literally threatening the entire kingdom. In fact, they had to enact a law to protect honor and respect in homes in that Persian empire at the time due to the act of Vashti. Beloved, I pray that God will not give us Vashtis in our church, but Esthers in our church. Shall we say a big amen? And so in the place of Vashti, in fact, Vashti did not realize that by honoring King Ahasuerus, she was honoring herself. Her identity as a queen was tied to the fact that she was related to a king. And so by refusing to do that, she dishonored herself, and Vashti lost her position as the queen of the land. Now Esther surfaces, and when Esther surfaced, Esther came with the cloth and the garment of honor. And I want us to learn from two lessons from Esther. Esther honored her uncle, Mordecai. In fact, when Esther lost her parents, the Bible says that Mordecai brought Esther up. And so Esther was a brought up, well-nurtured, well-trained, prepared bride, ready for that moment. And she was ready to obey the uncle, who was now the father, Mordecai, in all things. Number one, young ladies and singles who are watching from far and near. It is not enough to be on the internet and on dating apps looking for, ha for husbands. Let us prepare ourselves. We must be a bride that is very prepared. I must say that um, with all honesty, I believe that our dear daughter Stephanie is very prepared. Serving along with her mother, she has served pastors, apostles, and prophets. She knows how to manage a home. And when you come to the church environment, she is our Sunday school teacher. My own son, little boy, seven-year-old Kobe, calls Stephanie his best friend. Praise the living God. And I believe also that our dear brother Sam is very well prepared. Let me mention one thing because I happen to uh, just have the privilege of knowing this. Stephanie mentioned to me one thing he, she loved about, about uh, Sam. She said, I love the way he loves Christ. Now that gave me a deep breath. That, that, that took me aback. Praise the living God. We, we want to get to that point where, you see, um, for a lady to say that I love this guy because he loves Christ, it speaks to the spiritual health of the lady herself, and it also speaks to what she's looking for, and it also testifies about the grooming that this guy would have gotten. Does anybody agree with me in the house? May God bring our church up to the place where our young ladies are not looking for guys because of their flamboyance and because they are having this car and that car and they have this job and this level of education, but because they have Christ. Because it takes the magnet of Christ to keep homes and families together. Shall we say a big amen? Now, the story of Anna does not end here. We also understand that Esther did not only honor Mordecai. A lesson from there also is that Young men and young women, let's honor our parents. The, the fine products we see here today are a result of consistent mentoring and training by parents who are doing this intentionally. And I believe that all of us parents are getting clues and lessons from all of what we are seeing today. It doesn't end there. All of us young men and young women, those who are watching on social media, don't discard your parents when you come of age. We must receive from our parents nurturing and training so that our destinies will be fulfilled. Back to the story of Anna. Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 3, it says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. That means that when we talk about ladies or women honoring their parents or honoring their husbands, in this context I want to emphasize more on honoring our husbands or honoring the man who is the head of the home. Every man demands for or needs honor to thrive. Because he's the head of the home, he cannot function effectively without respect and honor. We all have egos of some sort, but God will want all of us young women and married women in the house 
to understand that your husband needs that love, that honor, that face of love that is called appreciation or honor in order to thrive. When you pour love on your husband and you pour honor on your husband, that husband will leave that home feeling significant. He begins to feel that something is worth living for. This wonderful lady loves me and is investing time to honor me. And when I come home, the home is all set and the place is clean and there's food on the table and she's doing so much for me. That means that life is worth living. I'm not going to get depressed. I'm not going to go out there and feel less of a person. I'm going to go out there and conquer. I'm going to go out there and win nations. Love is medicine that men need, but it doesn't end there. Women also need honor. Under the auspices of the New Testament, the Pauline Epistles teaches us that honor must be both ways. So whilst the woman is honoring the man, the man must also honor his queen. Praise the living God. There must be honor in the home. The absence of honor was literally derailing an entire kingdom. And let me go to the second point here that ends up this brief discourse. But before then, it is in my heart to declare that every marriage and every home that is in this place, may the spirit of honor fall upon all of us. I said, may the spirit of honor fall upon all of us. Let's honor each other. Let's appreciate each other. The two or the second uh, trait that we can catch from this book is acceptance or affection. And that is the last piece. The love of the king for Esther was demonstrated when, the king, when Queen Esther showed up in the court of the king and the king lifted up his golden scepter. By lifting up that golden scepter, we pick one lesson. It means, Esther, I have accepted you. It means, Esther, I have an affection for you. In fact, the king went ahead to say, a half of my kingdom I give unto you. So Esther was highly favored. Esther was accepted. Men in the house, let's honor and let's, uh, let, 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 let's have affection. Let's accept our wives. Some women live in their homes and they are treated like slaves and maids and roommates. You go to the home and the man is doing his own thing. His bank accounts are totally hidden from the woman. The woman has no clue what is going on. I pray that that will not be a portion of any woman or any home in the church of Pentecost. Hallelujah. So the woman must, be, uh, must receive affection. Her greatest need is affection. As a man, your wife is your queen. Treat that queen as a queen. What, how does that look like sometimes? Well, it may look like taking her to the mall and spoiling her. It is okay for a man to pull the card behind the woman and say, this is my queen. And Sam, you can do that if you are doing that. And somebody says, oh, but you are the chairman's son. He said, well, I'm the chairman's son, but I'm also a husband. And my father has trained me to be a good husband. Praise the living God. Let's nourish and treat our wives as queens. Let's treat them as queens. And finally, I want to say that the faces of love, it must look like doing the laundry, for example. Ironing her clothes and not counting her weaknesses against her. As the marriage grows and as children come in, it is very possible that her body contours will begin to change. But that should not affect the affection that a man should have for the spouse. That love must be so strong and must be so deep that nothing can shake it. Men gathered here, you all have golden scepters in your hands. But for some men, the golden scepter is down. And for some men, the golden scepter is up. Where is your golden scepter? Lift up your golden scepter. It is a sign, it's a message to your wife to say, I love you. I accept you the way you are. Praise the living God. If we do this, church, our women and our men, we can come together and our homes will become the places where nations will be possessed. In fact, Esther ended up requesting for the salvation of all the Jews of the land. She possessed nations. We can possess nations if our homes are godly and if our homes are filled with the love of God. God bless all of us. Amen. God bless you, Apostle Potterfield.